Hello there, this is the Bible of soccer, not soccer, and in this video we're going to talk about Iran in the context of the World Cup Russia 2018, Iran and their politics, and about how beautiful this world looks like. Okay, like always, I remind you that I am going here with no guidelines, no teleprompter, no master edition, and recording everything from my cell phone. Also, I remind you that English is not my first language, and English is not my second language. Okay, so Iran. Iran has a little bit of troubles right now with uh, FIFA, because Two of their best players, uh, Haji Safi and Masoud Shahey. I'm not sure about the pronunciation, if it's correct or not, but I'm doing my best. Okay, apparently in Iran, like a national state, they don't recognize uh, Israel as a country. So, the citizens of uh, Iran, if you're Persian or if you are a sportman in this country, you cannot compete with a rival from uh, this country, from Israel. So these two players, okay, they play for a Greek team, they play in the same club, and they were facing a team from Israel and even that they didn't go to the match in Israel, they play when they were the host, okay, it's their club, and they got banned from the government to play in the national team. But FIFA doesn't allow to uh, governments or to any particular body that is not FIFA to do this kind of uh, punishment or ban. So what happened is that now uh, in the beginning they were saying that they are expelled from the national team because of this situation. Later on when FIFA tried to do something they say that it was because of the level of their playing. But this is obviously not true because both of them are the best player of this team and also uh, Masoud Shahey is the captain, is the captain of this team. So it's really hard to believe and actually it's obvious when you see this team and when you see this player that both of them are the best. So after that uh, they lose it a little bit and Haji Safi was able to come back to a national team but for some reason Masoud Shahai I'm not sure why he's not still back or not back yet to the national team even though he wants to come back so they try to, to satisfy FIFA halfway I don't know exactly what is the current situation with this player but at least Safi was able, he's been able to play the uh, preparation and the friendly matches for the World Cup. Anyways, we are going to try to study this team <clears throat> with these two players so we can analyze the hardest, the hardest team that any other team can face and then we can do the same without Masoud at least. Okay, but we're gonna go ahead with that. So let's talk about Masoud Shahai. He's the best player of this team. Um, he is very talented, okay? He can leave behind players and rivals. He has very good scoring and very good kicking from far away. Okay, especially with the volley movement. He run all the field. Okay, 
sometimes because he is the best player of this team sometimes we're gonna see him a lot here in the back right but also we're gonna see him here helping in the attack okay but usually he's there that's his position but he's the only player of this team that the coach let him move everywhere okay because this team it has a very strict tactic where the players can only do what the coach said and we're gonna go through that later on okay but let's uh keep talking about this player he run all the field okay usually this is his main movement he's gonna transit through all of this okay usually doing this is a mistake why because this is the longest distance this is the longest distance that a player can run in soccer in football so it's a mistake when a player is running through this movement but he do it very slowly and relax because he let everybody else do his job their job and he's only gonna help okay but usually when you see a player doing this movement very stressed out because the team is not so good or they don't follow a good strategy it's a mistake okay because nobody's gonna run through this during 90 minutes that's not gonna happen so usually this is a mistake but in the case of Iran it's not a mistake because they know how to do it and they dosify the energy of this player then we have uh, Hakisafi who is the second best player of this team he's very fast here in the back left okay he has a good kicking he can score too and he has also free kick okay he has kicking with the ball in movement and he also has free kick then we have uh, the goalkeeper Aliresa Aliresa I think okay you may have watched Iran playing before uh, maybe some people who speak English from Iran if they're watching this video I am under the impression okay maybe I'm grown maybe some people is not going to agree with me in this but I, I take the risk of saying this uh, Aliresa for me the this team is made in function of Aliresa because Aliresa he has a very good vision for attacking okay he's the first attacker of this team and he can read the game very well but usually uh, goalkeepers who do this they is because they play they have a good play with the feet they have good kicking but this is not the case of Aliresa what he has is a very good throw out with the hands so when he gets attacked and he finally get the possession of the ball he has a very good and very precise throughout with his hands and also very strong because sometimes you're gonna see that there his uh throughout with the hands are gonna go and pass the midfield they're gonna go through the other side of the field okay and he's also very precise not because he's doing this you will think he's not precise oh no he is very precise but in the other side he has very uh, weak weaknesses uh, like a goalkeeper for example the best way to score this goalkeeping this goalkeeper is by going very low okay by by the ground okay usually all goalkeepers suffer uh, from this situation but in this case even when the kick is going very near him very close to him he's not gonna catch it okay he's really really bad on this 
So if the ball goes by the surface, by the surface, he's gonna have a very hard time. But as I mentioned, this team is aware of that. So they usually try to avoid these kind of situations and they usually, when they, when they can read what's going on, they usually have somebody behind him or trying to get a very good position to help him on this. Okay, the other problem about this goalkeeper is the aerial game. Okay, in the corners, when he's not sure or when he sees that maybe it's gonna be like a divided situation, he usually stay over there. He doesn't move, okay? He doesn't go outside to fight for the ball. And the same with the cross pass or with any uh, free kick who is gonna be a center pass, okay? He usually stay there and he doesn't go to fight for the balls until unless he's very sure he's gonna get it okay so he has a lot of weaknesses but this is the best goalkeeper from the for this team because of the attacking uh, side and I'm gonna go uh, deeper later about his weaknesses and why it doesn't really matter for this team that's why I'm saying that I think this team is made in function of him okay but let's keep going here we have uh, Gafuri. Gafuri is very fast. Okay, he has a very good projection in this band. Okay, he has kick with the ball in movement. Okay, very good, very good shooting. And he has a cross pass or a center pass that I personally called uh, this kind of pass. Uh, Alexis Sanchez cross pass or Alexis Sanchez center pass. Why? Because this kind of pass is not the typical pass that goes with a lot of effect. That maybe if one striker doesn't hit it with the head, there is another one behind that can come and kick it with the head. This kind of cent center pass is not like this. Or either it's not the typical center pass that goes like medium, medium height, and you can kick it. And if, if you cannot kick it, somebody else can kick it or, or touch it with the head. Or maybe another defender will make a mistake. That's not the kind of, of center pass. The center pass that I call Alexis Sanchez center pass is the one that the balls elevate a lot. Okay, and only one player is gonna be able to uh, touch the ball with the head. Okay, because the ball is gonna go, it's gonna come really from very high. So it's, if you're not precise, you're not gonna be able to uh, touch the ball with your head to score. So he does this kind of uh, center pass, which is not the best type of do it, especially if you're not Alexis Alex Sanchez and you don't have this kind of precision, but he is very good on this, okay? But I just wanted to mention this uh, characteristic about him. Okay, here we have a uh, Pura Liganji, Pura Liganji, okay? He has very good aerial game. He has a very good uh, sense of defending. He has a lot of projection for being a central defender. Okay, he has good pressure and he has short pass. He has short pass. Okay, but the most important thing about this defender is that he has very good sense of anticipation. Very good sense of anticipation. And we're gonna go deeper on that later on because it's very important for Iran's team. Then we have uh, Hosseini. Hosseini also have very good aerial game. 
okay? Or he also can go to the corners to try to score with the head. And also he has a very good sense of anticipation. Not as good, not, not, not as good as uh, for the Aliganji, but still good enough for the national team and for the kind of game they're gonna do. Okay, so both of them have very good aerial game, so he can cover the weaknesses of this goalkeeper. Okay, which is that he usually doesn't go and fight for balls that he thinks it may be divided. He's very bad on that. But the good thing for the goalkeeper is that he knows this and he prefers to stay. So that's why the coach used these two central defenders, central defenders to try to cover that. Okay, then we have Esatolahi. Esatolahi. Okay, so Esatolahi, in reality, he, this is not his position, but he plays there. He has a very good uh, projection, okay? But the reason why the coach put him there is because he has a very good sense of anticipation. Okay, so now we have three players who has very good sense of anticipation and we have two players uh, that adapt, who adapt to the anticipation system very well. So basically, I run the defending system is just anticipation. So what they're gonna do, they always gonna have a anticipation system and that way they're, they're gonna defend very well and they do it very well. Okay, they understand uh, very good what the coach wants for defending and this is their system anticipation 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 so basically that's why they cover very good all the witnesses of their goalkeeper then here we have ebra uh ebrahimi okay ebrahimi he's the real defensive midfielder of this team of of i or of iran to say it like that okay. he really plays in this position but the coach if he put it there he is gonna kill the anticipation defending system that he wants to use that's why esatolahi plays there and ebrahimi plays here why? Because he, he doesn't have any anticipation sense of defending. Okay, but he has a very good sense of location. Okay, he has very good projection. He has kicking from outside the box. Okay, he has a very good uh, aerial game too, especially for scoring. He's in charge of the free kicks sometimes and and he is in charge definitely from the penalty kicks. Okay, so what, what is the system for defending for this team? We have here three natural anticipation uh, defenders that can do anticipation very good, very natural. So there are three are gonna do that. These two adjust very well and this player is the real uh, defensive midfielder of this team. So what he's going to do is doesn't matter if the attacking come from here or through here. Okay, he is going to be the one who is going to do the dirty job on defending in the midfield. And Masood or whoever is going to play in his position, because remember, this is the player I said uh, is being banned from the team and we don't know if he's gonna come back or not but I hope he, he comes back so we can see good football and I'm gonna use I'm gonna do the analysis with him so usually he's gonna be the real defensive midfielder of this team and Masood 
is going to be a little bit like a pressuring. And both of them are going to be doing that job. In the meantime, the rest of the defenders, they're going to try to anticipate where the ball it could be. And this is how they recover usually the ball. Or in worst case scenario, they try to cover okay, the most uh, dangerous possible uh, passes or possible organizations. And they're going to try to force the rivals to pass the ball to another part of the field where it's not so dangerous, not so risky. Okay, this team is very organized, is very rigid, let's say like that. And basically, these are the only players who are going to defend. And the only player who has permission to do something different is Masoud. And sometimes, uh, Ibrahimi, when he has to go to do dirty jobs in far away from this position, he can cover him and they can rotate. Okay, these two players, they have permission from the coach to rotate. The rest, they're gonna stay pretty much in their position. And then we have uh, here the weakness uh, point of this team, which is uh, Johan Bakash. Jokan Bakash is a striker who missed many, many goals. In general, this team missed many, many, many chances of scoring. It's unbelievable, okay? Especially when they play with a team that are in the same level of uh, difficulty or the same level of quality of players. They usually uh, organize a lot of situations but it's very hard for any of their three strikers to score. It's very difficult. They generate a lot of situations and they score a very few. Okay, but the good thing about uh, Johan Bakash is that he has a very good sense of position and that he uh, is very good under pressure. He's very, very good when he has, when he received the goal, the ball under pressure, because when he doesn't have to think, he do a very good job. Okay, it's one of these players that you say the difficult, the very difficult and the impossible, he do it very well, but the easy sense, he doesn't do it very, he definitely cannot do it well. So basically, uh, this player, when he is, when he's been like, uh, when he has defenders very, very near him, and he has only one second to do something, he usually score amazing goals. But when he has time to do whatever he wants, he usually makes the ground decision, usually, most of the time. So this is a problem for this team. This, this player needs to be, uh, train a little more, maybe do some work with him and tell him something as simple as imagine that all the time you have somebody on your back and you need to make a quick decision. You cannot try to do whatever you want, even when you can. Okay, because I think this uh, striker maybe has some anxiety problems while playing football, I, I don't know, but it's, it's very it really caught my attention that he's very uh, doubtful when he has chance to think. Okay, then we have uh, Taremi here in the other extreme. He has very good kicking. He's uh, acrobatic or semi semi acrobatic player. Okay, he wants to always do some luxury passes okay he's, he's a little bit talented on that he's a fighter let's put it like that but again he missed a lot of opportunities what i will do with these players with this player with taremi is just use him 
just to make assistance. But I wouldn't use him to try to score, okay? I still will give him the chance to be a starter because, I mean, this is Iran. They don't have too many players to choose. Let, let's be real. But he actually is a very good player, but he, need, he needs to discover that he cannot try to score. Definitely not. What you can do is because you are almost uh, an acrobatic player, player you can bring many uh, defenders maybe more than one and then try to pass the ball to somebody else from your team okay but definitely he's not the best to try to score that's what that's the reason why Masoud shows up here very often because he knows this team already knows that he's not so good at scoring and that he's going to be most likely to be making an assistance. So he comes here to try to receive one of those assistants and then he's going to be in better position to score. Okay, and he has more sense of scoring, let's say like that. Then we have Asmoon, 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 I don't know the pronunciation, but uh, he has a very good... Uh, Dribbling, let's say like that. Okay, he has a very good sense of scoring. And he is the most technical, gifted player in this, uh, in this team. I'm talking about technique. Okay, about talent. Masoud is the most talented of this team. But Asman is the most technical. Okay, his, his technique is very, very good. He, is the best, he has the best technique in the entire team. And his main attribute is that he can do self-passes, okay? He's very good at making self-passes, looking uh, if there's any available space where he's going to go and he's going to make a pass to himself also because he's very fast. And the other good thing about this player as Mao is that even when he's going to pass the ball, he make it look like he's gonna do a self pass. So what is the good thing about this? That sometimes if he has one defender or two defenders, because everybody already know him, most defenders usually are, are going to think that he's gonna make a self pass. And when he does a normal pass, he make it look like he's gonna make a self pass so the defenders still stay with him. Okay, because he's very dangerous making self passes. Okay, this is good and bad. Okay, if you know that he's going to do a self pass, if you are the other team, I think this is one of these cases that knowing too much about uh, your opponent is negative for you because how many self passes can you make in one match? Maybe one. So if you're going to be very attentive, to wait that one time when he really is going to do the self pass, you can it can force you to make so many mistakes. So it's good for this player, that and that's why when he do a normal pass, he make it look like he's gonna do a self pass, so the defenders stay with them with him, and maybe he can do a forced mistake. I don't know, like in tennis. Okay, and then we have Amiri, Amiri. And he usually can play instead of Masoud. He has a very bit of talent, okay, to organize a very a little bit of vision. But of course, he's not as good as Masoud, okay. Then, how do you beat this team? Usually, another thing. So these three strikers, they usually don't go to defend. They usually don't go to defending position. In the best case scenario, the, or worst case scenario, they only gonna go a pressure a little bit, but they're gonna maintain their position. They're gonna hold their ground. Okay, because the coach don't let this team to uh, be out of order, okay? He's very strict, very rigid, 
and he doesn't want any disorder on the match. Okay, so they always stay around there waiting to start the next, the next attack. Okay, this is very important. Now, how do you beat this team? How do you beat them? You beat this team. Okay, there are several ways to beat this team. The one is the most obvious that I think everybody could say. This is Iran, so they don't have too many uh, talented players. So usually, if they, uh, I think if they will, if they will face a team that has more uh, talented players than them, they may lose. But be careful because this team is very, very good. Okay, in defending. Okay, but I could say that to any team, so you don't want to watch this YouTube video. I'm gonna tell you this, it's gonna feel, you're gonna feel like you're wasting your time. Okay, but uh, be aware that sometimes uh, teams with good players and a bad tactic, it can lose with a team like this. But in this case, I don't think uh, a team with a good players and a bad tactic would lose with them because uh, they really don't have those players that can fight very hard and that they have all the talent, especially with the problem that they have, that they organize very uh, too many situations and they failed, they fail. But how do you uh, beat this team with a tactic? What kind of tactic? One, way to beat this team is just over populate them in their in their part of the field outnumber them why because these three players i already know that they never gonna go there okay they only gonna go maybe to pressure but they never really going to go there for defending of course this is gonna be the world cup and maybe the coach is going to start training them to go back to defend them. Okay, in that case, in that case, what we want to do if we play against uh, Iran, what we want to do is try to put these two players or any of these three players in the middle of these three in any way, anywhere between the, in the middle of those three or if you cannot do that, try to make this player move against these two or these two or these two or these two. But the idea will be to try to put them in the middle. Why? Because you, if you put one of these players here or here or here or one of these two, what you're going to do is that you're going to break their anticipation system that they already have. That's why this team is so rigid and they don't let anybody come all the way to the back. Because if they go here to help, usually they're not going to help. They're just going to destroy the best they have, which is the anticipation system on defending. That's why this player is moved from here to here. Okay, somebody will tell me that sometimes Ebrahimi plays here. Okay, sometimes uh, Sotolaki doesn't play. Yes, I, I understand that. But that is, the, those are particular situations where the coach, uh, he wants to adapt to a particular opponent. Okay, but this is the team and this is the system that usually this uh, team used. Okay, so one thing is outnumber them one way of beating this team, at least in the tactic situation. The other way is to try to destroy their system by putting one player that is not familiar with anticipation anyway, anywhere between the others. And the other way to beat this team is by going with the speed Okay, in a counter-attack and one of those three is not there or 
this one where is the one we make uh, who makes the dirty job is not there. You have to attack them. Okay, a straightforward, really, really fast. That's also gonna work. Why? Because if you have a chance to kick, to make a shoot by the field, by the ground, this goalkeeper is very weak on that. So you have a very good chance to score. Okay, so if you go fast, you even don't have to get any close. You even don't need to have a good angle. This goalkeeper is gonna fail. Okay, he's gonna suffer a lot with that. And if, if you don't succeed on that, you have to be aware of where the ball goes because maybe you have a second chance. Okay, because these goalkeepers suffer with that. Of course, corners, but it's difficult because we have these two, as I explained. So I doubt even uh, unless your team is not a specialist in corner kicks, I doubt that you still will, will have a chance to score to them because they have these two and they're very good. Okay, so this is gonna be all uh, about this video. Uh, if you like it, you can give me a thumbs up, you can share it, and you also can subscribe if you don't want to miss uh, my next video. Just make sure that you look for ENG, okay, which stands for English. And those are my videos in English language because usually this uh, YouTube channel is, uh, is Spanish, it's for Spanish speakers, okay? Unless you want to try to learn Spanish with me as well, which it wouldn't be a bad idea. So it says goodbye to you, the Bible of soccer, of soccer, not soccer. Thank you very much.